Good morning, girls. Happy Friday. So excited to be on a Friday here and moving into a weekend, and hopefully you've got a lot of great stuff planned. So today we're going to talk about, I have a little Chrissy that decided to come join us in the office. So, um, but anyhow, we're going to talk today about worries and just the fear and, and worry that we're seeing so much trending through everything right now. And what's really hard is when I watch Christian women that should be thriving, posting fear, anxiety, worry, and all of this crazy stuff, getting onto these bandwagons with our liberal media or with other people that are just filled with so much hate and despair. And it's breaking my heart to see some of them. See, because one thing I know, girls, personally, my hope is not in anything in this world. My hope is not in, you know, my church. My hope is not in our president or our future president. My hope is not in the system. My hope is not in any person here. And that's where I think we're forgetting when we go about and we start posting and talking. See, because these things that we post and we come against, girls, when we talk like that, that is showing that we have fear and worry and we don't have a hope that is eternal. I get you don't agree with some of the stuff. I get the fact that maybe some of you don't like the fact of who our president-elect is that is being inaugurated today. I get that. But here's the deal. All of that hate, fear, and worry is not benefiting anyone. It's just stirring up that pot and keeping people just so full of animosity and, and attack mode. And it's time that we stop. A woman of God does not behave this way. A woman of God that wants to thrive definitely does not engage in that. And my heart breaks because I have seen women that I know that are God-fearing women out there bashing and hating along with everyone else. I see another group of them with the hashtag, not my president, shame on you. And I don't care if you get mad at me right now and stop watching. It's time we start changing. Girls, the problem is I understand that things in this world may not make you happy. And yes, we need to speak up about stuff, but continuing to go on and on and moan and complain is not benefiting anybody. This worry is actually representing, and this fear that we're seeing is representing people who don't put their trust in God. You see, I don't care who's president. I don't care what our system does. My God is bigger than that system. My God is in control of it. And see, how is it that you're like, well, Robin, that's great and fine for you. How did you get there? That's because I've been in the word. I've been in prayer. I've been in the fellowship with God. And I know for a fact he's in control. So why is it if you are plugging into God through fellowship, through worship, through the word, through quiet times with him, why is it we're still portraying that worry and fear out there? Scripture clearly tells us here, and I know it's funny because when I was doing, going through this, I went, oh, that sounds like yesterday's verse. But what's amazing is it's because God said it twice and actually said it more than twice through Scripture. Therefore, we must pay attention to it. Okay, so we're talking about Psalm 62, 5 to 6 today. And this, girls, is where we should be pressing in. Not in this whole bandwagon of not my president. And this whole bandwagon of the world's coming to an end. And ooh, Russia this and all this over here. Oh, look at this. Look what they're doing over there. Look what they're doing here. Stop it. You need to be reflecting Jesus Christ in this world. You are a light and you are the salt. Act like it. And I have to say it that way, girls. And I get the fact that some of you may turn off the video. 
I get the fact some of you may stop following. I get the fact I'm going to piss somebody off today. But God never meant for his word to be always patting you on the head saying, keep going, it's okay. God's word was meant to correct and direct, as well as edify and encourage. But see, in the world today, we don't want to be corrected and directed. We just want to be built up. That's why the churches that teach nothing but a feel-good message thrive so much. They're non-confrontational. And they make it easy for you to come in the doors, go about your life as normal, pat you on the head, and you walk away feeling good for the week. While God sits there and weeps. Because he wants you closer to him. He wants you to be more Christ-like. And my question to you right now, what would Jesus do? Would he be putting hashtags out there, not my president? Would he be on the streets rioting and protesting? Or would he be out there sharing the love of Christ? Seriously. If we're going to be Christians, it's time we start acting Christ-like. And it's not to say we're perfect, oh, girls, because I know I'm far from that. I'm far from that. But I do the best I can to make sure that people see Jesus through me. That's why I'm willing to come this morning and risk the fact that I'm going to piss you off today. But I share this because I love you guys, and it breaks my heart. So it's like a Psalm 62, 5 to 6. It says there, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock, my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will never be shaken. Girls, He said it to us twice in Psalm 62 now. Where's your hope? If your hope is truly in the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the living God, then you should not be worried because some man was elected into office. What you should be worried about is those lost souls and those people that are causing these issues. We already know that half the stuff that's been stirring people up is false news. CNN already got called on the carpet for it all. We have George Soros who went and paid rioters to go in busloads to places. We need to stop the madness, girls. And I'm going to tell you this much. If you're caught up in it, and if you're so distraught, I actually had somebody tell me that they can't make plans for their, their business and their life because Donald J. Trump got elected president. The world's coming to an end. It's horrible. I can't do this. There's no hope. And that's ludicrous, really. Because what that's saying is that you rely so much on our system that if the system went away, you wouldn't survive. See, I don't think that way. I rely solely on God. And I believe no matter who is in office, I believe that no matter what our weather is, what my health is, I could go down the list. My God is still in control. Because remember, I told you, God sees this whole picture like he's in the blimp over the rose parade. He's not sitting in the bleachers with you and I, watching just what we get to see for the moment. So why are we showing that we're so worried and we're so fearful and all of this going on if our hope is in Christ. Why? Do you really think that any elected official really cares about you? The answer is no. None of them do. President Obama did not care about you. If Hillary Clinton would have won, she wouldn't have cared. Donald Trump won, he's not going to care either. They have an agenda, they have their direction they're all gonna go in. We are responsible for ourselves, And if we start owning who we are and what we do, if we start leaning on the true hope that we have, we are unshakable. I'm not phased by who's in office. What I'm phased by is the worry and fear that I'm seeing here on social. The worry and fear that I'm hearing out of people's mouths. 
And to me, what that's telling me, and I love you guys, even if you're ones doing it, I love you dearly. However, what that's telling me is your hope is not in Christ. You are relying on a system to provide, meet your needs, and make your world good. If we came together as women of God, collaborated, that's my big word right now because it has been so amazing to do some collaborations lately. So amazing. God is awesome. But um, if we come together and if we start focusing on our communities, as women of God rise up, we're thriving, right? If we're thriving as women of God and we are leaders, we rise up. We collaborate and bring other people in together and we take care of our communities. That's what we should be doing. And then if, if, then if the system wants to keep up with us as we're thriving, fantastic. If the system wants to go another way, let it go. Stop putting your hope in the world. And that means stop putting your hope in the elected officials. Stop putting your hope in the media, the liberal media for that fact. I really believe, ladies, that this is a time where we're going to be a light in this world. And when somebody starts whining, ignore them. Don't join into that conversation. Or what would Jesus do? Jesus would respond saying, my hope is eternal. It is in heaven with God. And leave it at that. I'm not worried. I have no fear about it because I know in the end, I know in the present that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords still reigns over everything. He allows things to happen, all leading to a purpose. So if we are pressing into Jesus, and I challenge you to do that today. Instead of being worried, instead of being fearful in what's going on in this world, celebrate the fact that you have a living God that loves you unconditionally. You have a living God that has promised you eternal life if you know him. You have a loving God, a loving Father in heaven who wants nothing more than the best for you. You are precious in his eyes. So why are we walking around like the world is coming to an end? Why are we walking around like we have no hope? You know, I listened to a couple of the speeches with President Obama and Michelle Obama where they were saying, don't fear, I know hope is leaving the White House. Very inappropriate. Because my hope is not in them. Never was. I don't care who's president, girls. I care about my community. I care about my relationship with Christ. I care about my home. My husband and my fur kids. I care about my ministries. As I reach and touch you ladies. And those that know me, you guys know I have a genuine heart for you. And I am grieving today as I still am seeing what I see out there. I challenge you today to look at Psalm 62, 5 and 6 and read it again and again and restore your hope in Christ Jesus. And remove that worry and fear. Because trust me girls. I don't care if the perfect person was nominated as president. There would still be issues. Because see it's not just one man. There's the whole establishment down below him. But my hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is not in this world. Once again, Psalm 62, 5 to 6. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him, God. He alone is my rock, my salvation. 
He is my fortress, and I will never be shaken. Can you say that? Some of you can't today, and I've seen it on your social. Stop buying into the fear and worry and start pressing into Jesus. There's my challenge for the weekend. You know, I love you guys, and I know this was a hard one to get out there. And I struggled this morning as I was reading and preparing and just, I'm like, God, I can't take this forward. And of course he says, yes, you can. You will take it forward. But I bring it forward because I love you girls and I want you to thrive. I want you to start looking at everything from Christ's perspective. Not from your own. Not from the fear of the, the liberal media. Not from the hate that's streaming through social. Not through the protests and riots and everything else that happened. Put your focus on Jesus Christ. Thank you, Bev. And allow him to be your hope. Because again, in the end, God is still in control. God knows. But I challenge you, no more hashtags that say not my president. No more hate. No more fear. No more worry. Because you, my dear friend, are a precious child of God who has a hope and a future greater than anything you could ever imagine. Press into Jesus today. Have a blessed weekend, girls. And I know that I love you. I'm not going to apologize for the message because it was given from God. I really want you to thrive this year. Let's start today, okay? All right, love you, girls. Bye-bye.